Hey everybody, this is Doug and Brad with the Dark Sliders Podcast. Hey everyone. And because everybody else is doing it, we're doing it too. We're going to be doing our Game of the Year Awards. Woohoo! And to introduce our Game of the Year Awards, we didn't play all the games that are winning Game of the Year Awards. <laughs> like, <at> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be Game of the Year Awards that the two of us played, which combined is a decent number. But I feel like I feel like we should preface this with a few like and we'll get to a category that we have later. We have some weird categories, but like neither one of us played Fallout. Neither one of us played The Witcher. I kind of played The Witcher. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So those aren't game of the year. And I feel like those are the two that keep popping up the most. And because uh, and actually to do our first category, because we're, we are, are basically our buying habits are entirely dependent on sales. We realized that most of the games we played didn't actually come out this year, so we decided to make a category for it. And what we're gonna we're gonna start with is our best game of the year, not from the year two thousand fifteen. Yeah, well, I think really quick before we do this, we should just run through our categories really quick here. So, oh yeah, we've got best game not from two thousand fifteen, best game we didn't like, which is kind of an interesting one. We'll talk about that when we get there. Mm -hmm. Best game we didn't play again, kind of a weird one. Best character, best story, our most anticipated game for next year, our biggest disappointment for this year. My personal favorite one that we came up with, which is the best specific thing. Mm -hmm. And again, we'll give you some details when we get there. And then, of course, we'll do our game of the years individually, and we're going to attempt to agree on one, which I don't know if that'll go well. <laughs> yeah, we actually haven't. We actually have not. We really, truly have not agreed on, like, the Dark Siders. <laughs> we put Sliders. a list of games and just picked out the ones from, like, the five that we liked a lot. And just of those five, well, these three match. Let's talk about those three. <laughs> yeah, it's like, we'll try to figure out what our game of the year is, actually, on this podcast. So our best game, not from 2015. I actually, I th I'm actually kind of glad this is, this is mine. Is a uh, Yakuza Four. I think we actually, I think we talked about it, like on the very first podcast we ever did. Yeah, it was it was in the first five episodes. Yeah, yeah, for I think, sure. Yeah, it was definitely it was definitely like definitely one of the first ones. And I keep and I was playing Yakuza Five recently. Just bought that one. Actually, Yakuza Five would probably win. I, I don't know. I haven't played. I haven't finished it yet. or I haven't really started it yet too much. But I just kept. It's like every time I was thinking about the Game of the Year awards stuff, this one just kept popping up in my head. I was like. Because I think it's one of those few games that I didn't have, like, I had, like, no expectations going into it. It was a game I kind of wanted to play and just ended up loving. I've talked about it a lot on the podcast. I like the whole transportation of Tokyo. I really like the characters. I really like Japanese sit I like Japanese crime dramas. Well, not, like, Asian crime dramas. And it's a great Asian crime drama on top of everything else. Just a really, really fun series. I would like other people to try it. I know, Brad, actually, you tried it and you didn't like it. <laughs> I made it two hours. <laughs> I made it two hours. And I was like, this is not a game for me. Let's <laughs> no. find something new. <laughs> yeah. It's all subtitled. There's like a lot of, there's a lot of barriers to this game. Like it's all subtitled. It's all very, very, very Japanese. And I could see that some people just wouldn't like it. But if you, if you have it, like, I just feel there's a lot of people listening to this and just have it sitting in their PS plus list. Just download it. Play it. Yeah. And that's, and that's what I did. I just gave it a shot and I just, it's not for me. I could see why I can understand why you like it. Mm hmm. <laughs> but I just, I, I, not me, no. <laughs> <laughs> and that wasn't your best game you didn't like either. It's a good game. Though. No. Uh, so mine, my best game from not 2015 is Saints Row 4, because this game is just a shit ton of fun. And I got about two hours in this game and then uninstalled it. <laughs> Did you seriously? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, no, this game... I don't particularly care for open world games, which I've talked about before, but this one made me want to do everything just because it was so entertaining to do everything. Mm -hmm. This game was fun just to go from point A to point B and just the wackiness of it, the goofiness of it, just everything worked so well in this game's favor and the plays on other games were great. I mean, it played like Mass Effect for a long time. I just really loved that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like game kind of gets the. I, I feel like a lot of people like that game, but people don't really talk about it, or maybe we just miss the. We must. I think feel like we totally missed the boats on Saints Row when Saints Row was popular. I didn't play. I think I played a little bit of Saints yeah. Row Three. Because <laughs> I totally, I bought Saints Row Three on sale for like five dollars, like two weeks after Saints Row Four came out, <laughs> yeah. and then I got Saints Row Four when it went on sale on PS4 mm -hmm. two months after it came out on PS4. So I'm so far behind, like when those things actually come out but they're so much fun and they're great games and i think especially they get overshadowed by grand theft auto so much mm -hmm. and so many people say oh it's just grand theft auto but i dislike grand theft auto i get bored with grand theft auto but i could sit and play saints row for hours yeah i think saints row is like a game that you just it's basically when you just turn on play for a bit turn off come back later it's like it's sort of like a like rocket league's not the right word but it's kind of that sort of 
drop in, drop out genre, just some time to dick around. Yeah, in. it's just fun. It's just fun. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing serious about it. It's just pure fun, and it's awesome. So this for, for this next category, the idea of this category was we. I, the thing I don't like on the on just like the internet at large, just people in general. What a lot of people, if they don't like something, it's bad. And these are things that we completely agree are are probably very very good games. We just didn't like them at all. Not at yeah. all. Well, there's things we liked. It's just that it's kind of like if you don't, if you're a fighting game fan, maybe you don't like role playing games or something like that. And then you can still acknowledge that these games are great games. They're just not your thing. Yeah best game that we really really appreciate and think is just a fantastic product that we just don't <laughs> want to spend any time with at all <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is like yeah it's just like kind of like giving credit to those games that you know other people would like and i like really i think like yeah people should play these games we just don't like them for sure so mine was bloodborne which here's another excuse for doug to talk about bloodborne <laughs> but that game is gorgeous the world is really cool the monster design is awesome I just don't like it. I have no desire to play that game, but I can sit here and I can tell you I highly recommend that everyone gives it a shot mm-hmm. and under, with the understanding that if you don't like the first hour and a half of it, you're not going to like it. Oh, that's so raw. Ah, that's gross. No. If you don't like the first five hours, you need, to get, you need to get through that hump of like actually learning the game. Okay, I guess that's true. I'll give you like three or four hours. Like Put enough time in it to go, I am pissed off as hell right now and loving this, or I am pissed off as hell right now and need to break things. Yeah, I I th- I feel it's like a game like because I I know you got to the point where you understood the mechanics, you just didn't like the mechanics. Yeah, yep. And I, I think there is a point that people are just like, oh, I don't like the mechanics, we're just not gonna play it at all. Da, 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 da. But I think that if you do put enough time into it, you're you're gonna fall. You are gonna do what I did. I fell in love with the mechanics, or you're gonna be like Brad, just like you know, I understand how this game works, and you know, I still don't like it. Really cool game. Yeah, though. and I think I think it's one of those games where people. I don't feel like there's very many people who are sitting there going, Bloodborne's okay. <laughs> I feel like people no. are like I I'd never want to touch that game or this is one of the coolest games I've ever played. Mm-hmm. And there, I feel like I very rarely see people in the middle going, "It's all right." Yeah, that's true. So so you're a person you're so you're saying like this game is amazing. It's just yeah. <laughs> Which I have an odd feeling based on the way this year's went. We'll see that little dichotomy there when we get to game of the year. Just a feeling. <laughs> oh yeah, no, we're going we're going to be fighting. Uh, <laughs> not, I'm actually not totally thrilled to sit there and argue about which one we think should be our, our agreed on game of the year. So my best game I didn't like at all was uh was The Witcher Three, which is a bummer because that game is that game uh, just like Brad was saying is like, like with Bloodborne. Is Witcher is really cool. I actually just want to talk about my experience like buying the game. So I I bought the game and I so I got my little PS4 box that was wrapped in a sleeve. It wasn't a collector's edition. It was just a normal edition. And you take the sleeve out the box, you open the box, and there's the first thing you see when you open the box is a little note from the devs that says, thank you for buying our game. We really appreciate this. We made this game for you. We understand that you that this, the game probably cost you a lot of money and that we appreciate that you decided to spend your money on our game. It's like, oh, oh, okay. That's, that's game of the year material right there. <laughs> yeah. Damn. I was like, that's cool. But then like, so you pull that out and then they have like two stickers you pull those away, so you got the stickers, and then you got a world map. Okay, you take that out. You get a manual that describes all the story and lore thus far. It's not even like a manual that tells you how to play; it's just the lore. It's like a lore book. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and then you got something else. Oh, and then you also get a soundtrack CD, and that's in the normal and edition of the game. This is in the standard edition, that's ridiculous because that's like most games add twenty bucks for all that. Yeah, it was really cool. So I played the game. I was like, I'm gonna love this game, and uh, I. You know what it was? It's it's one of those games that's like immediately overwhelming because there's yep. just so so much to do, and really I, I I played about two hours of it. It sort of dawned on me. It's like you know I'm not gonna have the time to play this. Yeah. Like me and Brad like, and that's yeah, that's one of those things that's held me back even from buying it. Is I don't have I don't have time to invest like eighty hours into a game, mm-hmm. and it's just it's intimidating me to put something into my PlayStation and go all right 80 hours let's do this i don't that's intimidating to me at this point in my life <laughs> this is a, 80 hours is like a month-long process for me if that yeah so yeah i don't know and i mean i think we talked about this before before you even bought it mm-hmm. neither one of us liked the witcher one and two no i got I, I don't even <laughs> talk i don't want to talk about regretting this purchase please <laughs> i have bought all of the witcher games and I have not got. I literally have only gotten two hours into each one, and I didn't like any of them. And I just kept hearing there's an awesome, 
and I can see why people say it. I understand it. I get it. I get it. It's just like I didn't, and I honestly like the world of Witcher. It's like it is a very cool dark fantasy, but it just wasn't a world that I I wanted to invest a lot of time in because I kind of I get that it's like a dark version of Western fantasy, but I'd rather see something I've never seen before than something that, like a twist on something I have. Yeah, so, I'm really bummed about yeah. that. I'll probably I'll probably get around to playing it eventually in the future, <laughs> maybe. So this this was a fun category. Best games we didn't play, which is basically games we will probably not play for the next few years. That we really wish we would have played. Yeah, we really, really wish we would have played. And it's it's mostly just because we don't own the console that it's on. But I think both of these are actually <laughs> yeah, Xbox I, One. I noticed that we both picked Xbox One games. <laughs> yeah. I think I think both of us right now are kind of like we have a list of games that's slowly growing to each push us to buy an Xbox One. And I feel like once that list gets big enough for either of us, we're probably going to grab an Xbox One. Unless they announce NX soon, and that ends up being, like, amazing for whatever reason. Yeah, that's that's exactly where I'm at with that, is about the time that I'm going to want my Xbox One, there's going to be an NX, and I'm going to go, I'm not going to want my Xbox One, yeah. but, yeah. Mine was Halo 5, which I actually just had a really depressing moment with yesterday. I was going Christmas shopping, <laughs> and I went into Best Buy and bought a copy of Halo 5 for my nephew. Oh. And it's sitting upstairs, so I've officially still bought Halo 5. <laughs> And it's just sitting there at my kitchen table, and every time I walk past, I go, oh, damn it, I really want to play that. <laughs> you can play it for, like, 350 bucks. <laughs> exactly, and I don't want to play it that bad, but yeah. we've talked about before, I mean, I love Halo. Halo's my all-time favorite game, and we did that list earlier this year, mm -hmm. and it's killing me a little bit that I haven't played Halo 5, even though I know it's not the greatest game out there. Mm. Just the fact in my mind of knowing there's a good chance... If I ever play this, it will be years from now. Yeah, figure out a way to get that. Get that. So we can actually talk about Halo one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. We talk a lot about Halo Five, having never played it. Yeah, my fa my favorite game is Sun Sunset Overdrive. Honestly, seems like the coolest Whoa, wait. damn game. I just realized Sunset Overdrive didn't come out this year. Did it not? Yeah. No, it came out like a year and a half ago. Oh, I don't give a shit. Whatever. It's still the game I want to play. <laughs> <laughs> it's really... You didn't even follow the game of the rules, game of the year rules. Oh, what? Oh, yeah. I, actually, I, I guess that's true. No way. That must... I don't know. I'll have to Google that later. October 28th, 2014. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a really a cool game. a year earlier. It's basically the only game on Xbox One currently that, like, as I look at, look at Xbox One, that I really 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 re more than any like literally more than any game on xbox one sunset or overdrive just looks amazing to me i've heard it's like and like you like you were saying with halo 5 like i heard it's okay but i don't care it just looks it looks really i don't know it looks yeah. new it looks it's something that i really want yeah. and which is interesting because neither one of us i thought about just like oh fallout i haven't played fallout yet and i really want to play fallout but it's like eh, that's not like the best game i didn't play because I'm going to buy that soon. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, when I was thinking about this, the one that was most devastating to me was Halo 5, just because yeah. I know I'm not going to play that. But because I, like, thought about, oh, well, Xenoblade just came out, and I haven't played that yet. But it's like, those are great games that I really, really want to play, but I know I'll be playing those in the next six months, whereas Halo 5, it's, who knows? Yeah, that's kind of, even, like, I, I always had this, like, imagine, like, maybe I'll get a gaming PC one day. In Sunset Overdrive, like, they've reiterated, like, tons and tons of times. Like, it's never coming to PC. It's like, ugh. Like, I won't, even if I get a gaming PC, like, I still won't be able to play it. God dang it. I know I'm going to get an NX instead, too, which is really frustrating. <sighs> Maybe Sunset will end up on game, game, I don't know, on a game PC or whatever. <laughs> God, now I'm, now I'm actually bummed. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a depressing one. Let's move on to something more fun. That one was sad. We shouldn't do that one again. <laughs> Let's never do that again. <laughs> that was Here's a mistake. Really These seemed like fun categories. That was a mistake. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Uh, so, so the next category, this is a more normal category, I think, but I felt it was like worth talking about because I thought there's a lot of cool new characters and new stories. Uh, oh, actually, they're right next to each other, too. Uh, the first thing we're talking about is our, our best character. Well, I wouldn't say best character, just our favorite characters. And again, I think all that should be taken into account. But these are our favorites. Uh, yeah, it's true. It's kind of like, yeah, I mean, these might be, yeah, it's kind of like liking a summer blockbuster movie because uh, I, I, my best character that I put down was the, was the cast of Until Dawn. And, like, as I'm, like, saying that aloud, I was like, they were, if they were in a movie, I would not have liked this cast at all. They're just kind of, they're just a normal horror drama cast. And yeah. 
and that's it. I don't know, but I, I just I just said the entire cast. I think it was the only game. Actually, it was kind of fun because uh, I I just finished playing Metal Gear Solid Five before I started until dawn, and in Metal Gear Solid Five, like I didn't I didn't realize how much I didn't care about anybody in Metal Gear Solid Five until I started playing until dawn, and realized like oh my god like oh I don't want these characters and like when when people died in until dawn I wasn't like. There was a part of me that was like, oh, crap, I screwed up. But there's a part of me that's like, oh, no, not Chris, not Matt, not 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 these characters. Yeah. And yep. while, like... There's a character... Oh, yeah, there was... Yeah. <laughs> well, like, you know, Big I Boss died all the time. I didn't give a shit. I didn't care when major characters... I don't even know if... Matt, I don't even remember right now if major characters died in Metal Gear Solid Five. I just... I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm trying to remember, like, other than, like big boss and quiet other characters in metal gear solid 5 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i think that experience with metal gear solid 5 actually like enhanced my experience with until dawn i was like oh well they're actually like you actually can care about video game characters so that's yeah, yeah that was my choice was the entire cast of well until dawn. my choice was slightly more expe- specific because i went with until dawn 2 and due to spoilers and whatnot I'm going to not point out the character, but if you've played the game, it's a character that has the pretty unique arc and ends up doing some crazy stuff. That is such a huge I'm gonna leave spoiler. It... <laughs> yeah, but I didn't say which one. <laughs> There's like eight of them to choose from. Yeah, okay. I didn't name names. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> we're going to have to edit that. We're absolutely going to have to edit that. <laughs> no, we're not. Yes, we are. It was not that big of a spoiler, oh I don't think. <laughs> It was a, that was a huge spoiler. That was absolutely a humongous spoiler. No, it wasn't, because not a single name was named. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> All right. But anyway, it's the character who kind of goes on that kind of stuff. Well, since we're talking about best story, would you also like to continue talking about <laughs> Until Dawn? <laughs> and just ruin that, too. Well, that's your best story, so you can spoil the rest no, of the yeah, story. No, I, yeah, my best story is Until Dawn. Actually, if you just want to hear more of our talk about Until Dawn, we actually we did, like, two podcasts but two like like an hour and a half long discussion on until dawn so uh that was my best story i, I really like that story and it's kind of hokey and dumb but I, I thought the way it was told was a lot of fun you're not gonna spoil anything more i'm not gonna spoil anything <laughs> you're not gonna tell us that there's a stop <laughs> evil dragon <laughs> that would have made that game cool cooler that would have been awesome that been pretty awesome uh so my best story i'm actually a little sad because we were going to do another episode before we got to the game of the year, and we were going to talk a lot about this game, because I sat through and played through this entire all five episodes of Life, and Str- Life is Strange in, like, six days. Mm-hmm. That game, and we'll probably talk about it on our next episode after we finish Game of the Year, because I want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. It The story in that game is fantastic. I almost went with a couple of characters from that for best characters as well. Just, it's such a great game, and the story, you get so caught up in it, and... It feels weird at first just because the story is just like, oh, you're Max, who's an art student at a the school, and you're just going around school. But as you go through the story and as these different things develop, uh, she has some time travel powers that go crazy all over the place, which isn't a spoiler. It's in the first five minutes. Calm down. <laughs> um, and just the way that things play out in terms of what's actually going on, because you never really get a sense of the big picture of the story until you're two or three episodes in. Mm-hmm. And the way that once it hits and once it hits and it develops and once it moves forward and the way that things pan out in addition to the choice system that I actually feel like is not to until dawn level where it's you have full, complete control over life and death but kind of in between there and like a telltale game where you can kind of tell exactly what things are going to happen and how your choice is kind of isolated mm-hmm. in between there. But the way that it all plays out and the way that it works all together is just, it's so good. And again, I don't want to spoil much about the story just because initially you don't even know what the story is until probably the second or third episode, but it's just, it's so good. Yeah. I got to play that. I, I I was stuck in the, I was stuck in the being a teenage girl thing having teenage girl problems is like, ah, I'm just, Brad keeps talking about how good this game is, and everybody keeps talking about how good this game is. Yeah, the first episode's a little slow just because it is all, it's basically like teenage girl drama, like, oh, Victoria's being a bitch, and <laughs> I hate that my teacher is picking on me because I'm too nervous to show my photo for our photo contest, and... <laughs> yeah, I was just kind of stuck in there. Yeah, that goes away after, like, the first episode, pretty much. And that's where, like, the story really picks up, and it just really hits you. Like, okay, there's some crazy shit going down in this game. (laughs) It sounds like like me trying to tell you to play Bloodborne. (laughs) 
Why? <laughs> like, it's like, oh, well, once you get through the first hump of, like, you know, the first few hours, I promise you it gets great. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> no, it's like the first, it's like the first hour and a half. It's not the first whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's not the first, like, whole game's worth of time before it gets, uh, yeah. When, once you beat the game, you'll feel really great about it. Yeah. Actually, really, really, totally side story. Like, like Mirror's Edge, I did not like my first time through, like, entirely. Because, like, the first ten hours, like, the tutorial, and the second time I went through, absolutely loved it. One of my favorite games ever. I, Very different game when you know what you're doing and you understand the mechanics of that game. Yeah, I feel like that, yeah, that's a lot of games like that. I, I feel like I can kind of appreciate it because it means their mechanics are deeper than, you know, a lot of other games. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, moving on. This is kind of one of those weird ones. I, I always feel like this is a weird category, but... There was so much crazy shit that happened this year when it came to, like, E3 and Game Awards and just <laughs> everything else. <laughs> now that you're mentioning that, like, the stuff that, like, people are pumped about, Shenmue 3, Final Fantasy 7, <laughs> we'll, we'll <get> <laughs> um, Uncharted 4, <laughs> like, all this stuff, neither one of us. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so we picked, like, the weirdest things for this. No, I, I think you had, I think you, I think you have one that's, like, pretty pretty much everybody's kind of going after is everybody's pretty test but just in compared in comparison to the response for shenmue 3 and final fantasy 7 and those kinds of things street fighter 5 you know mass effect yeah mirror's edge mm -hmm. i went with no man's sky which I, th I don't think that's that crazy of one because i think that's one that everybody's looking forward to but just and we've talked about it enough on here for me to not go on and on, but every time I see something about that game, it just makes me go, man, I want to play that right now. Mm -hmm. Man, I want to play that right now. And I almost feel like my hopes are too high for it, and it's never going to live up to what I want it to be, but yeah, I want it so bad. <laughs> see, and that, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's not much much else to say about No Man's Sky. That's just kind of like when it comes out, everybody's going to get it. It's going to be, it's, I mean, See, I went with a safe. I, my, the reason I chose mine before I say what mine is is because there's no way I could be disappointed in this game. Uh, <laughs> I picked Trackmania PS4, <laughs> and like, which is such a cop out answer. Nobody's that excited about Trackmania. No, nobody. Well, I mean, there might be some people, but yeah. The thing is, like, I just well, apparently you are. If that's what you just picked, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I did. I did choose my most anticipated. I guess it's... some somebody might be like somebody might be really anticipating this. Not me, <laughs> but my most anticipated is <laughs> no. I mean, my most anticipated game is Trackmania PS4, which sounds weird, but the thing is, I feel like as I get super, there's n there's never really been any one game that's lived up to all my expectations. So when I'm like super excited for a game I don't know about, I'm usually end up disappointed. So I was thinking is like, well, it's my most anticipated game, like a game I've never played, know nothing about, and could probably get disappointed by. Or just one that I know know I'm gonna love. It's kind of like you you I like like sense. you know you like you're gonna like Halo Five. Even if it's an okay game, you know you're gonna love that game. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's kind of with like Trackmania PS4. If it's literally just Trackmania on PS4, I will love that game. <laughs> but see, I feel like it's a little cop out because I feel like that's me going like next year my most anticipated game madden 17 <laughs> you know what this is there's no like it's not going to be that much different from what you already know you know what i yeah. mean i feel like that's just like an overly safe one. Oh man i can't wait for the new nhl okay all right all right fine i'll give you a real one i would say uh the res vr res vr is probably my most anticipated game <laughs> so you went with like a remastered game <laughs> no i just <laughs> Well, no. A game that is literally identical to every other game that's come before it, <laughs> and this game that's more or less a remaster. No, no, no. Well, it's not just that. Like, I, I'm just, I'm really, really tempted. Doug hates new things. I, I'm really, yeah, I, I like new things. I'm really tempted to pick up a Morpheus, and that just, that just idea of like kind of flying through space sounds really, really kind of cool. And uh, yeah, so I'd, lo I'd love to see that one. That, that one, I, yeah, that's probably my most anticipated. I'm not good at this most anticipated part. There's too many weird. <laughs> no, you're not. I had too many like weird like mixed opinions about everything that was announced. Like like the last Guardian I've been waiting for for like ten years. When they finally showed us, like I, my thing was like, oh, I can't wait to play this. God damn, when is that thing gonna come out? Like I'm not super anticipated for it anymore. I just like I just want it to come out. So <laughs> I I think I most anticipated needs like a certain level of excitement instead of just like annoyance that it's not out yet. So that's why I chose yeah, Trackmania PS4. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> And and res <laughs> and res. I don't know. Every, the more I, the more and more I read about res HDs or the res uh, VR version, just sounds crazy. So, uh, yeah. All right. So Doug's most anticipated is Uncharted Four. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got 
that to something that's actually new. <laughs> I don't care. I don't even want to play Uncharted 4. I don't really care that much. I'll rent, I'll rent that. I'll definitely rent that. I'm sure I'll... Just like I... I don't even own all the other ones. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Movie... God dang it. <laughs> I, could, I can see why these things are... These Game of the Year awards are really hard to do. They're really hard to do. Uh... So moving on to our biggest d- disappointment, I actually haven't picked a game for this yet, so I'm gonna let Brad talk about his because I might just agree with his. Yeah, mine, mine actually is weird because originally when we talked about this, we talked about well, let's just pick five game of the years and talk about those. But we've talked about so many games already that obviously we've already talked about them on the podcast, so we felt like it'd be a bit of overkill, so we just narrowed it down to one. Mm-hmm. But my biggest disappointment was also on my top five games of the year, mm-hmm. uh, which is Metal Gear Solid Five. Now, the reason that's my game of the year is from a gameplay perspective, and the reason it's my biggest disappointment is for a story perspective. Yeah. And we talked about this originally when we did our kind of review of it. Mm-hmm. Story-wise, this game is a mess, and yeah. we already kind of hit on it. There's no memorable characters. You have no clue what's going on. You don't. You never get really a bigger sense of how this fits into the Metal Gear universe. Mm-hmm. It's just it's a mess, and that really devastated me a bit because that's what I was looking forward to this game for. This game could have been a 20 hour movie with like little bits of kind of crappy gameplay thrown in between. Mm -hmm. And I probably would have been perfectly fine with that. Cause I just want to have more of the metal gear universe. So just having that story be fall so flat and be so unfinished. It just, it sucked. And the gameplay is tremendous. And I don't think anybody can say a negative thing about this game as a game. If you were to mute it, take out all the cutscenes, and just be like, okay, go invade that base, the way that those things play out is perfect. Yeah. But just the story, it's 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 a big disappointment for me, and it really prevented me from ultimately even finishing that. I got to like the what is like the end of chapter one or whatever, mm-hmm. where it splits, and then you kind of do the same thing over and over again. And I was like, eh, I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't. I, I didn't even finish Act Two. I feel like this game actually would have been an amazing new IP. You know what I mean? Like this exact same gameplay. Because I feel absolutely. Because yeah, I feel like it was a bad Metal Gear Solid game just because the story was so bad. But the story was so bad because it, I feel like it was like being held back by like having to answer some questions from Metal Gear Solid. Like these, like it was trying to like, tie up a bunch of weird loose ends and stuff. I just kind of felt really disjointed. So maybe if it had like a fresh story that was set in the exact same setting, and maybe just swapped out the character for somebody else. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it could have been just a better game, but I don't think Konami would have let <laughs> Kojima do that. <laughs> no, not so much at all. No, I don't, that's probably not. My, but actually, I think my probably as as we were, as we were talking, I think probably my biggest disappointment was Arkham Knight because it is such a damn good game. It's like as there's nothing bad. The only thing that's bad about it is that it's an Arkham game. And in that, if you've played a lot of Arkham games, it plays like a lot of the Arkham games. So it has a sort of like redundancy to it. But everything about it is just so incredible. The, I don't know, the the characters were, I, well, I, well, I didn't really like the overarching story. Um, I, I thought the characters were really cool. I thought the setup was really interesting. I liked that it was sort of like uh, Gotham during a war zone sort of deal. I just, I just felt like I was playing more Arkham, and I got burned out with Arkham. I feel like I, I probably would have enjoyed this game more if I never played Arkham Origins, just because I felt like I was burned out on Arkham after playing Arkham Origins. Yeah. Having it be the fourth game as opposed to the third game does really hinder it a lot, because now you've done it one extra time. Yeah. And Arkham Origins, for me at least, left a pretty bad taste in my mouth, because that game just it doesn't live up to the other three at all. Mm-hmm. But I think... I think if you go on a little bit more fresh, I'm sure it's not quite as bad, but I could totally see that because there's not, there's nothing new to it. It's, it just, it is, it's one of those, it is what it is. Yeah. See, I even just, I disagree. There's nothing new with it. There's a lot of new things about it. It's just, it's like the new things don't overshadow the, re- like, I, yeah, I feel like you're, I think just, I guess this is a kind of clue. I think if you went into this game fresh, this would be one of the best games you've ever played. But just because of the legacy of being the, yeah, like you're saying, the fourth Arkham game. Yeah, I could game, see that. Because it's the fourth Arkham game, you've played three other very similar games to it. That very similar combat, very similar. Because it's like every cool thing here is overshadowed by the fact that you're still playing an Arkham game. So, which is just like, I'm disappointed that I'm disappointed in it. So, I think that's, I think that's a pretty good. <laughs> because MGS5, like, like you, I mean, I agree the story wasn't very good. But I thought the gameplay was just so, so damn good. That I, I could forget. Like I didn't even care. Like I didn't care because the, because the gameplay was so good. I didn't care about the story. I actually was like tempted to skip yeah. through cutscenes. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, see, and that and that that hurt me because I never skip cutscenes like in any game ever. Yeah, and just the thought of doing that in a Metal Gear Solid game of all games. Yeah, that's that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it hurts. I I can understand that. Damn, that would have been a cool new IP though. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. If you just like, oh yeah, you're building a a PMC in these war areas, and you're going on missions, and you're starting to run your PMC, and you leave it at that. Yeah. I mean, don't even add any more story than that. Leave it at that generic story. Mm-hmm. And how there's some people who have killer robots. There you go. Like, <laughs> yeah. Done. Don't have this overarching like. Oh wait, is that the guy from three? Yeah. And how? Ooh, is he? Is he the son or father of this guy? And, yeah. Yeah. Nope. Mm-mm. It was just bad. Yeah. I just. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, that story was so bad. It wasn't even the story, it's just the characters. Like, the characters used to do Ocelot. Like, they made Ocelot boring. Like, Ocelot is in that yeah. game. Ocelot's cool as shit <laughs> in every other game. And in this game, is just like, I will train these soldiers for you. And torture everybody. He was just... Welcome back to base. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't know. That was, that was really weird. Yeah. Dang. Those... The thing is, we both like those games. They're just disappointing. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah, there's no game that, like, as I was thinking about this, that stuck out stood out in my mind of going man that was terrible yeah so it was like it was always always like that was awesome i wish i liked that more so yep. uh moving into our this is this is one category i kind of i kind of like because i feel like there's like these little things in games that kind of stick out as wow that really minor thing is actually kind of cool um so we want to have a category which is like best specific thing <laughs> which is i know a very vague title for this but but I feel like that's on that's on purpose on our part, just yeah. because it wanted to be, what is some new thing, whether it's a system, a mechanic, a setting, mm-hmm. a style, whatever it is, anything that came up with. And I think we came up with some good ideas for this, but yeah. yeah. So I guess my favorite specific thing, this is, I guess this isn't really a unique thing, um, but I just thought it was a thing that's been done before, but this was just done really well. And the very the best specific thing I liked was uh, the end of the chapters of Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. So I explained this in a previous podcast, but Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, each chapter sort of follows this character, a single character as they interact with people around the town. And then at the end of the chapter, they sort of have a concluding scene about that character. That doesn't mean the character dies. It doesn't mean it doesn't. It, it, it it's really vastly different for each character, but the there's an end of the chapter i i don't know which chapter it was maybe chapter three it, it doesn't matter i guess i'm not gonna spoil it anyway but like i teared up like really bad like i was like i was in tears because it's actually a really really powerful scene i was just i was shocked that like the, the, i could be like you know so affected by it and it really just came down to, like the voice acting and it's not the game how they do visuals is not really explicit of what's going on you, you can sort you see the sound of things which is a weird way to describe it, but if you play the game you'd understand um but just how they sort of play with the mechanic of you can't actually see what's going on but you can have you can like hear with like clarity of exactly what's going on they can do some sort of things so they can sort of insinuate things that kind of let your imagine they, they let your imagination fill in the blanks and there is a specific part at the end of the end of one of the chapters where, like, I was like literally in tears, so like, I couldn't believe what was what was going on. And it's actually a really really simple scene. And it's like I think it's a character just talking to themselves, and that was it. And I don't know. I just felt like that was probably the most powerful video game moment I've ever felt. Like I just most games don't like really bring me to tears. Right? Like people are like, oh, the end of Metal Gear Solid Three was really sad. I was like, yeah, kind of. Yep. But uh, the end of The Walking Dead. Yeah, but those are the. They're kind of sad, like in a in a superhero way, I guess. Like they're they're sad and <laughs> they're they're like they're not they're not like really realistic things. I guess I guess everybody got the rapture isn't really a realistic setting either. But I feel like <laughs> I feel like the emotions were very real. I don't know, just those and un- all the end of chapter scenes. If you haven't played Everybody's on the Rapture, it's it's kind of a hard sell for a lot of people. But if just ugh, damn those end of the chapter scenes were so good. Uh, I also put a few other ones on here. Just I'm gonna go through them really quick. The arcades in the Yakuza games are awesome. When you're walking around Yakuza, you can just go to arcades and play just full arcade games. Yakuza Five has a you can play all of Virtual Fighter Two on in Yakuza Five. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. 
I thought the hallucination scenes in Arkham Knight were really cool. Don't want to go into that. You, there's fear, like a large part of the game is the fear gas, and they do some really, really, really clever stuff with the fear gas. You can listen to more on our spoiler cast for Arkham Knight. And uh, woohoo <laughs> promotion! And last thing I liked was Metal Gear Solid Five. We talked about this in our review as well. That I like that every plan that you can come up with in Metal Gear Solid Five absolutely works. It's just your job to make sure that plan works. And I just thought it was really cool that basically the gameplay lets you do a thousand different things and there's not many games I, I don't think there's any game i've ever played that lets you have that like versatility when choosing how yeah to do stuff. that was actually on my list too before i narrowed it down to a couple just because the way like i said before that gameplay works is so unique and it's so specific to that game mm-hmm. it's it's awesome and just being able to look at a base and approach it from nine different ways and every single one of them has a chance to succeed is something we've never seen before yeah and in that review, we talked about how that really does feel like what a next gen game should be, where it's complete. You have control over everything about it, and mm-hmm. that's just really cool. Yeah. Um, but my best specific thing, uh, I want to talk about Life is Strange a little bit more. So, if you don't know too much about Life is Strange, it plays like a Telltale game where you have to go through and make choices. However, the main character has um, the ability to rewind time. Mm-hmm. So as you make a choice what will happen and it happens mostly in the first two episodes and later it stops like prompting you for it, mm-hmm. but it will give you an option to rewind and you can rewind it and rehab the conversation. Yeah. So there's one scene early on in the first episode. I'll use this example so I don't spoil anything because it's within 10 minutes. You're talking with the principal of your school and you can either tell him that somebody did something horrible or you can kind of try and hide it and figure it out yourself. And what happened is the kid's like the like rich prep kid at the school who everybody's like, oh, he's the greatest kid ever. Yeah. Like he would never do anything wrong. So the first time I did it, I clicked, okay, I'm going to tell him that he did this. Mm-hmm. And the principal was like, oh, well, we'll look into it. But I can't believe he would do this. Like, are you sure you're not just making this up? And then as soon as it's over, it says, oh, man, now I kind of painted a target on my back. Maybe I should rewind and not tell him yeah. that. And then so I rewound and I did the other one and I went, oh, it's really bad. I really hope that somebody else figures out that he did this so that he doesn't get away with it. Yeah. And it just gives you that option of going like, oh my God, I can pick either choice and both choices has a good and a bad side. And the ability to see both sides of that is really cool. And they do a lot of things with it later on in the game where, well, I'll talk to this person. There's one scene where you're supposed to be friends with this character. And because it's the first time you've met the character in game, like, Mm -hmm. and you're new at this school too. So it's like, I'll bet you don't even know my last name. And then when she says that, it pops up four names. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And so you just have to, like, randomly guess. And the first time I guess, she's like, oh, see, I told you, you don't know anything about me. Why would you be willing to help me? And then as soon as you finish, it's like, you can leave it there, or you can go back and rewind, and the correct name will be underlined this time. She goes, oh, it's not that. It's Oh, blank. gotcha, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can just do all these weird things with the choices, and the way those work, and the way that rewind affects the way this game plays makes it feel much different than when you're just making choices in Telltale games. Because in my mind, initially, I thought, this is going to take all the stress out of it, and it's going to take all of the, like, oh, my choice has an impact. But it actually makes it feel like a bigger deal because you can see both outcomes. Yeah. And you know you really have a good idea of what you're doing. You have a complete understanding of, if I do this, this person's going to die, or this person's going to get pissed at me, or this... And you see it specifically from both angles, which is really cool. That is kind of neat. I'm I'm kind of glad they play with it too, so it's not just because I when I when you when you had written this down, I just kind of saw it on the outline. I thought it was just maybe like, oh, it's just like a do over. I didn't realize they actually like played with the mechanic of the fact that you can change your decisions. Like I like that. I'm glad that they did do that. God dang it, I can probably play that. Yeah, you need to play this game. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. That's, um. So I was constantly getting texts from you like, oh my god, this game. I was like, okay, it's, Jesus. <laughs> I will just throw this out here, and we'll probably talk about it later because I do want to talk about it a bit more. It is one of the most depressing games I've ever played. <laughs> like Towards the middle of the game there, it gets into some really heavy crap. Like, <laughs> And just as you're playing it, I'm just sitting here going, like, you can't make it. You just made it worse. You can't make this. Why is it getting worse? <laughs> Why does it keep getting more and more sad? <laughs> yeah, that's, I just kept getting like these constant texts from Brad. Like, oh my God. I was like, okay, Jesus, what? I thought it was just like a, you're playing like a teenage girl. How, how, how does this game go? But uh, maybe it's like until, maybe it's kind of like until Dawn Wars. It's kind of like a, a game that has, throws a lot of surprise at you. Yeah. And I think it's one of those things that you really don't understand what it is until you've played it. Cause I had the same feeling I did with until Dawn, where at the end I was like, that was not what I expected. That was how, why was that that good? <laughs> it's kind of the feeling I had when I was done with it. Mm-hmm. 
So the next part, we came with this we came with this category actually just before the podcast because we when we decided the game of the year, we, we both have our very clear game of the years, and we'll we'll get to that afterwards. But I think we decided like we sort of need to have one like as a podcast. Like, what is you know what is Dark I think, actually think. Yeah. I actually think now that we're talking about this, we should flip these. We should give our first game of the year and then discuss why these aren't in the discussion because neither of our game of the years are in our discussion for game of the year that we can agree on. Oh, okay. on. that's a good point. Oh, oh yeah, so let's, for sure. So let's do our game of the years first. Yeah, I don't want to do mine because mine's boring. I think everybody, if anybody listens to this podcast knows what it's going to be, so you go first. <laughs> well, you just you just admitted it's Bloodborne, so why don't you talk to us about <laughs> mine... Bloodborne for 30 seconds so you can get it out of your system. Uh, Bloodborne is the best game, second best game I've ever played. <laughs> <laughs> it's not but still not better than kingdom hearts 2 final mix you guys need to play that game um yeah no bloodborne bloodborne just does everything right there's i've always kind of wanted a game since i was like a kid that i was always jealous of jrpgs because i saw like jrpgs had really really cool characters and really really cool settings and there's no and but i did but i didn't like playing them i liked action games I like you know platformers and I like being in direct control of my character. So I was always kind of jealous of JRPGs. I always got the kind of the cool characters, the cool story, the cool setting. And Bloodborne was like kind of, I don't know. It's definitely not the first game to do it, but it's definitely like the game that I think it just did everything right. The gameplay is just completely on point. It has a setting more interesting than any JRPG or any action game I've ever played. And uh, I, the story, I'm kind of like, eh, whatever. But I, I don't know. Just like that game just that really just struck a chord in me. I, I really love just how... I guess dangerous, da- dangerous isn't the right word, but that game took a lot of chances and they put a lot of money into that game that clearly a lot of people were not going to like and clearly did a lot of very, very strange things. And I, I don't know. I just kind of appreciate that. But yeah, Bloodborne, blood, God damn Blood, that game's so good. If that ga- <laughs> I'm surprised that game's not winning more game of the years. I can, see, although I can see why Witcher 3 is. I feel if you throw enough people I mean, in the room. Kind of the dis- I feel like that's the discussion is Witcher 3 Bloodborne is basically what it's come down to for most people at this point. I but see it, but I feel like I feel like more people just in general would enjoy Witcher 3 more than Bloodborne. So I don't know, is that does that make it not an doesn't make it a worse game, but does that make it should it be game of the year if less people will enjoy it? Yeah, and I think it's it's that cult appeal versus more wider appeal. Yeah. The Witcher 3, from my understanding, is a very Elder Scrolls ask anybody can sit down and play this and have a good time with it. Whereas Bloodborne, if you're not gonna invest your time, you're not gonna like it. Yeah, but e- but even Witcher Three has some hardcore elements to it. I don't know. I don't get why Witcher why everybody loves Witcher Three. I don't. I don't get it because it's. I don't know. Maybe it's just that. Maybe it's just that people like open world games. I don't know. It's a good game. I don't know. I just thought Bloodborne is the best thing I've ever played in my life. Sec- <laughs> second best. Kingdom Hearts second best thing I've ever played in my life. <laughs> All right, so I had a much harder time with this. Cause I think yours, your game of the year was decided back in February. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I sat down, and I came up with a list, and there were four that stuck out to me, mm-hmm. and I really could not figure out which one of these four I wanted to go with. Mm-hmm. Um, but I ended up going with Splatoon. <laughs> <laughs> which I don't... Yeah, you're definitely going to explain because I saw this. I saw this in our outline. I was like, "Brad, what the what the hell is that doing there?" And he's like, "I can't tell you to the podcast." I was like, "All right, fine." It's so so good, and I just Splatoon is better than yeah. Until Dawn. It's better than Rocket League. It's better than Life is Strange, and it's better than Metal Gear Solid Five. Those are the five that I had written down. Yes, Metal Gear Solid Five was my, and we said we'd come up with five. I'll throw it in there, even though it kind of pissed me off a lot. So it's better than those. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> I went with fun. So more or less what I did is I sat down and went, okay, Until Dawn and Life is Strange are both phenomenal games that I love. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I was done with those, I was over them. Mm -hmm. I don't need to go back and play Life is Strange. A part of me wants to just go back and play the last chapter of Until Dawn just to see a couple different endings, what I can do to mess with the characters. But that's really it. Those games have no lasting feeling for me. Mm -hmm. Now, when I sat down, and it came down to ultimately for me between Rocket League and Splatoon. Yeah, Splatoon. From the moment I played that beta, three weeks before it came yeah. out, I was like hooked on that game, and I played the hour of the beta and went, "Oh my god!" and set an alarm the next morning to wake up at Nintendo's dumbass time to play the <laughs> second one. I set an alarm at like six thirty in the morning to play this game, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then played it for that hour. And went, oh crap! It's three o'clock tomorrow. Okay, I think I'll be home three o'clock tomorrow afternoon to play it one more time. <laughs> And just 
played it for those three hours, and as soon as I was done, went, I need to go buy this, and sat there and played the multiplayer for like 10 hours straight mm-hmm. the weekend I got it, and then went, oh, crap, there's a single player, and the single player is kind of garbage, but, well, I should just play it because the mechanics are fun, and played through the whole single player the next weekend, and it's just, it's so much fun, and I loved it, and I sunk so much time into it. It's so unique. It's so different. It does just... I didn't mention this, but it was going to be my best specific thing too. And I talked about it when our review of it um, is you always have something to do. There's never a second of boredom. Yeah. When you're playing Rocket League, you've got to drive to the ball and then you can maybe hit the ball if you happen to be coordinated enough to do it. (laughs) This, as soon as you die, boom, you can start painting again. As soon as you start turn around a corner, there's spots to paint. You can always have something to do. And it's just, it's so good. And ultimately what I did is I decided, well... I can't decide between this and Rocket League. So I played Rocket League for an hour and then I played Splatoon for an hour. Oh, that was smart. And it just like, Rocket League, I played their cool new hockey version. Oh, that was a bad idea. (laughs) Yeah, which I think that might have also affected it. But But I played that for a while and then I played Splatoon and I just, I I still had more fun with Splatoon. Well, now that you said that, I'm I'm thinking that you're kind of biased because that part, that did suck. I will will say that Rocket League, as much as I love Rocket League, I will agree that there's sometimes it's just kind of slow. Yep. Damn so many good Not games i want what? to play <laughs> yeah you should play splatoon if you haven't played splatoon go play splatoon so so it's so yeah good. so so far our game of the year is bloodborne and splatoon which i dislike which you don't like and splatoon which i haven't played and it sounds like i'm and don't understand why <laughs> no, I, I don't i don't get it i don't get it. i know you don't even, i know you don't play like you don't play it as much as like these other games no, i've put more time into that than i have into the other four. Oh, okay really okay well, I mean, because Until Dawn was eight hours, Life is Strange was about 12, and I probably put 30 or 40 hours into Splatoon. Jeez. Okay, I didn't realize that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I think I maxed out the level cap in the first one. Jeez. Before they started updating. Yeah. That sounds like a lot. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. Maybe I got close. I don't even remember. I got to like a... Yeah. Oh. So since I never played Splatoon and Brad hates Bloodborne, we need to come up with an... We need to agree on an actual Game of the Year award. And... uh so currently we have we have three on our list here that we're probably going to discuss. Although I think one's just kind of sticking out to me. So there's Rocket League, mm-hmm. uh, a yep. game we both really enjoyed. We talked about our podcast. We we brought our friend Brian on to talk about Rocket League. Ton of fun. I still play the game pretty regularly. Like uh, it's my it's that game that like it's just that I I have no action games. Not like I don't have any drop in drop out games for PS4, and that's my drop in drop out game. So I've been playing a lot of that. Yeah. Next one is Metal Gear Solid Five. Uh, we've talked about it a lot on the podcast. Great gameplay. Not gonna argue that. Yep, we've talked about it a lot today. Yeah, lots of today. And then Until Dawn. And I want to say Until Dawn. Like I'm not even like looking at Rocket League and Metal Gear Solid Five. I think I I want to say Until I'm gonna fight for Until Dawn. So I don't care what you're gonna say. Whatever you're gonna say next, I'm fighting for Until Dawn. I like how you just said this was what we could agree on, and said I don't care what you have to <laughs> <No>. say. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't, unless you can tell, unless, oh yeah, I guess, I guess this should be a, a joint discussion, but it's not. Yeah, instead of you just saying, this is our this game This is our of game the of the year, year. there's mouth. no discussion. No, well, we can discuss. Do you, okay, here, sorry. You go first, son. So, I think for sure, Metal Gear Solid Five. I think we kind of threw in there just because we both really enjoyed it. It had a lot of, a lot of positives in its mind, but like I said, that one was kind of my tack on one. Both of these showed up, if we were to name our top three games of the year i think yours would be probably bloodborne until dawn rocket league mine would be splatoon until dawn rocket league yeah. so although you know what's weird i would still say metal Gear solid 5 is a better it's a better game hey man this is weird this is hard but see like neither one of us even considered metal Gear solid 5 for our top game of the year but, and we both considered the other yeah two. if i ever put a top 100 like we put a top 100 list together until dawn would probably be lower than metal Gear solid 5 and i still want to put until dawn as our game of the year <laughs> <laughs> like i know it's just until dawn oh man this is weird because i really do think metal Gear solid 5 is gonna be like a lasting game like for sure like that that game i i know i could go back to and from years from now and say wow that game is still really damn good well i feel like until dawn is a really good one-time experience yeah and that was kind of what i said when i was deciding it mm-hmm. That Until Dawn is a great eight hours, but compare that with Rocket League, where I can, like you said, just drop in, drop out whenever I want, and I can play yeah. that over and over again. Yeah. I've actually maxed... So Metal Gear Solid 5 is out. Yeah, I've, I've actually got all the items for Rocket League. Like, I have all of them, like, over... Like, that, all the new items, like, every time a new update comes out, I play until I get all the items. Damn. Damn. 
So what's your so you what's yours? <laughs> I don't know. You go first. <laughs> My my gut says Rocket League just because I think the amount of time I put in that and like you said I can still just put the pull that up and go yep I'm gonna have some fun with this and I'm gonna enjoy it and I put way more time into that and I just think it's really good but Until Dawn has that unique factor of Until Dawn is something we've never seen before I I feel like when I played Rocket League I wasn't I think until I I want to say Until Dawn left more I've played way more more Rocket League but when I when I started Rocket League, like I got into the beta, and I was playing, I was like, "Wow, I really, really like this game." I wasn't shocked that I that I liked that game, though. I was like, "Wow, this is just a really good game." Until Dawn was a game I had zero expectations for, and it was kind of a genre that I I don't play a lot. Like I played like a little bit of heavy. I think I actually played a few hours of heavy rain. I didn't even remember playing it. I liked Indigo Prophecy. <laughs> I was I have a La Norse sitting there waiting to get played. Um, but I, that game was just so mind-blowingly fun and good, and I just wasn't expecting it. Like, I rented it the first time. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like this game. I might like it. And and then after playing, I was like, I need to buy this game. Like, I, I this was this, this was probably the, one of the only games I've ever bought where I bought it to support the developer and say, you know what? You guys did a good job. You guys need more. You guys should get more sales. Because this, this game is like, this, more than any game probably on our list, it is like, it felt like a, a real passion project that I think a lot of people felt like probably wasn't going to be that good. I felt like Rocket League was like, cars and soccer is going to be fun. And they Go. made it awesome. <laughs> and I'm not saying it's not awesome, but I don't I think Until Dawn, just because I, I thought it was not going to be as good as it was. and it. But this is game of the year, not most surprising game. If it's most surprising game, then yeah, I'll give you that. But I'm looking at Rocket League, and we played a ton of Rocket League together when it first came out. Yeah. Like, And I just remember both of us sitting there going like, Oh damn! Did I just do this? Oh shit! Now I can do this. Oh crap! Like, how did you score that goal from half court? And it just there were so many moments in that where I'm just like, oh man, this is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. And it was so much fun. And the two of us played it, and our friend Brian, who we had on for our review of it, we probably sat down and just together, the three of us probably played for hours and went, hey, eight o'clock tonight, Rocket League, go, let's let's do but, this. I mean, there is not a game that has come along that I've done that yeah. with since early Halo games. But when you turned it off, did you think about it? Did you did you want to talk about Rocket League when you were done playing it for with it? Did you want to? But 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 Rocket League's not a game that you want to sit down and talk about. It's it's simple, like you said. Just because I don't want to sit here and talk about it doesn't necessarily mean it's not the best game. You know what I mean? And just because Until Dawn had like crazy over the top moments of like, oh damn, I can't believe that happened, doesn't mean that it's a better game. I don't know, because, like, what what do I think a better game is? Like, the better game to me is a game that la had, like, a lasting impression. Like, there's a ton of these games, like, I'll call them, like, cotton candy games, almost. Like, Rocket League, Team Fortress 2, Trackmania, I really love Trackmania. But they're games, like, I just, I sort of, like, play and I consume, like, kind of, like, eating, like, a bag of Doritos. Like, I never, I don't think about them. <laughs> like, I put, I put 200, 200 hours into, into uh, Trackmania. I don't know, like, how many hours I put into Rocket League. But those games don't leave as lasting impression on me as something like Until Dawn or something with a good story. But but clearly they do because you just said Trackmania was your most anticipated game of next year. Damn it, Brad. So if this cotton candy game, as you put it, isn't the best, then why are you not excited for Until Dawn 2? Like, would you be that excited for Until Dawn 2? No, I'm more excited for the game I have no expectations for. I'm excited but for the game again, I don't know going... is going to... Like, the game the game I think is going to be my game of the year next year is the game I don't think is... I right now don't think is going to be that great. I want. But, I think the game that comes out and defies everybody's expectations and does the one thing it said it was going to do very, very well and better than any other game in a genre should win. So let's say until or let's say Uncharted Four is the perfect game ever. It's the best game. Story's flawless. Action's flawless. Ten out of tens everywhere. And No Man's Sky comes out. Seven out of ten. It's cool to explore. That's your game of the year. Would it be your game of the year? <laughs> well that depends. no see but that's, that's what i'm saying like know. that's what i'm saying it's like i would i would to me like just just how i think about games like i'd rather have the slightly flawed game that made me rethink about games win game of the year than the game that is a very good game that i expected to be a good game and it was and it has very good game mechanics but again you're missing the point game of the year is the best game not the most surprising not the one that did its thing best overall thing what was the best and until dawn 
<laughs> this was a bad idea. We should have talked about this before we got on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, I don't want you. I don't want you to like. But this is this is this is a thing too. It's like look at look at look at what our game of the year are. Our, this is. I think this is the. I think we sort of. I think as we start like getting into our podcast more, we sort of realize that we actually do have like kind of big differences when it comes to how we play games. Like Splatoon yeah. is your game of the year. I can see why if yes. Splatoon is your game of the year, I can understand why Rocket League would be your game of the year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because there's like super solid mechanics, but to me, like super solid mechanics, I think is a good way, good place to start. But like, I don't like Bloodborne because it has great combat. I like Bloodborne because of a lot of things. And there's, but like, but again, <laughs> you're sitting here going like, oh well, I didn't have this shocking moment I could talk about with Rocket League. You're not supposed to. Well, oh man, did you did you know that time where my car exploded? That was coming up crazy. I can't believe that character's dead. Like, no, it was just fun. And I think this is where you get into like the fun versus really really good story critical nonsense like life is strange is one of my top four top five games of this year completely different and i like it for completely different reasons it's not my game of the year because yeah there were moments in that like you said where i'm like oh my god this is the craziest thing i've ever seen in a video game like why is this happening right now yeah but in the grand scheme of things if somebody were to say right now which game would you rather play which game would you suggest to somebody it would be rocket league because Every single person on Earth, I feel like, could sit down, play Rocket League for an hour, and have a good time. So that's so funny. To me. Okay, because would a, would a Life is Strange ever beat a Rocket League? Would the, would the best version Possibly. of Life is Strange beat the best version of Rocket League to you? Probably yes. There's a chance. I don't know. I would it, again. It's that's such an like hypothetical question because right now I would say okay, okay. So to put this in perspective, in my mind. Heavy Rain yeah. beats Rocket League. Oh, whoa. Yeah. So what? Because I love Heavy Rain. And Heavy Rain, when I was done, I went back and I played through it two or three more times. Oh, okay. And even in my mind, Walking Dead Season 1, or not Walking like that, or even The Wolf Among Us, is close to a Rocket League. Because those ones I went through and I played it and was like, that was something completely different. I'd never played a game where like choices seemed to matter in that way. And the story was just so tight and so well done that I could say that that is as good as rocket league until dawn. Yes. Those elements are there, but there's moments where I'm like, okay, that was kind of drawn out. There's moments where I'm going like, yeah, okay. That could have happened differently or, okay. Did I really need to take the 16 mile hike to the second cabin? Yeah. You know what I mean? There's things like that where there were moments in that game where I didn't, where I got disengaged. A game like Heavy Rain, which seems weird because it's basically the same game, yeah. I didn't have that. And Heavy Rain, I instantly wanted to go back to. Until Don was like, man, that was cool. That's something I, everybody should do once. So, okay. Rocket yeah. League is something everybody could do. And I would say just do over and over again. I guess I could see that because I don't have as much experience with Heavy Rain in those other games like, you ha- like you've had. So this is like this is be like me arguing for having ra- for heavy rain because it's like the first kind of game I've played like this extensively. That's true. Have you? Because have you played heavy? I rain? played a little bit of it, but I, I kind of lost interest because I thought the setting wasn't nearly as interesting. I thought it was like okay, and you didn't play Beyond. No, I didn't play. And did you wait? Telltale wise, you played Wolf Among Us. I played Wolf Among Us. I played Walking Dead season one. I like Wolf Among Us a lot. Okay. I love Walk. I love Wolf Among Us. Okay, so I guess I don't know because. In my mind, again, there are games that play like this that would beat it, but Rocket League to me is one of those defining multiplayer experiences, kind of like Splatoon, where it's like, this is a game that is for everyone, that is just fun, that I think everyone could play for years and years and years. Rocket League, I feel like, is one of those games that 10 years from now, people are going to go back to and go, oh man, remember that like NHL hits 2002? Yeah. (laughs) I go back to and play that game because it's fun as yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. That's Rocket League. I don't go back and play, you know, whatever the 2002 equivalent of Until Dawn is. I, damn, that was a good point. Indigo Prophecy is pretty good, though. Uh, <laughs> 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 I I can understand that. I know this game will probably get... I, th- I feel like this game especially... I feel like Until Dawn will definitely get lost in the pages of history because there's going to be yep. better games than this than Until Dawn. Uh, that are going to do Until Dawn better than Until Dawn did. Damn it, I liked Until Dawn. <laughs> Me too, I'll, I loved I'll get... Until Dawn. It's fantastic. See, game. I don't want to concede, though. <laughs> I really liked Until <laughs> Dawn. 
<laughs> I liked Until Dawn more than I liked Rocket League. Can we just put both up? Can we just put, <laughs> put all four games up as our game of the year? <laughs> Brad's game of the year, Doug's game of the year, our game of the year that we couldn't decide. Yeah, I thought I really thought we could agree on this because I really thought you were going to go with Until Dawn, but uh, shit, your arguments for Rocket League are pretty damn good. But Hell yeah, that's, it's are. it's so I true. I don't know. I, I don't I don't disagree with anything you said. I just when I think right now, what is the I've played? You know, I've played put like a hundred hours in Rocket League, and I still think Until Dawn was a better game. Yeah. Really? I th- I think I think it was more unique. I thought it was more interesting. I thought it was had a more lasting effect. So I don't think we're going to agree on this one. <laughs> I don't. I really don't. Is that okay? Can we do that? Hmm. Can we, like, not agree? We can do whatever the hell we want. <laughs> so we have four game of the year. <laughs> God damn it. Well, no. We have we have two for the podcast and one individual. Yeah, okay. So four. <laughs> yeah. I will put I will so, put that as a very... I would say it's a very hot... I would put Rocket League and Until Dawn on the same level. Equal. And, I'll put them on and, equal. Let's just say I'll concede to equal. I won't concede to one's better than the other. Uh, I I can concede to that as well because I'm I feel like I'm sitting here arguing for Rocket League until Dawn is easily one of my favorite games. Yeah. Like I loved that game. It it did have a lasting effect, but just in my mind, Rocket League is a half step up. Yeah. Not even like not even like that full step. Just like gun to my head, I go Rocket League. That's so funny because I, I know I've played way more Rocket League than you have. <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then I just put a notch above that. I put Bloodborne. I'm sure a notch above that you put put Splatoon. Yeah, these these were the three that I will tell you that I came down to where I just sat there going like, "Dear God, how do I decide between Rocket League until Dawn and Splatoon? Like, how do I?" Do I think this? that's okay. Can we just do like, I, I, yeah, because I would say Bloodborne, Bloodborne, Rocket League, and Until Dawn. Like, that would be my top three. Yeah, we'll go. Yeah, well, who cares? Ca- I guess who cares? Like, what's the game play. of the year? Because we're both gonna say Bloodborne or Splatoon. Like, those were our favorite games. But everybody should yep. play these games regardless. <laughs> Absolutely, do yeah. that. All four. I feel like it was like the end of a Sesame Street where you, you like end an argument by agreeing to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all friends. We're all friends. I don't know how we're going to announce this on Twitter or anything like that. That's going to be a bitch. <laughs> I like how that's your big concern with this is how do we say yeah. this on Twitter. Our game of the year is these with These four, four games. Without sounding wishy-washy, which is... Uh, I don't think we are wishy-washy. I just think these are all games that are just one slightly better than the other. And uh, everybody should play well, this. What would really help is if we had a third person to break the tiebreaker here. I think that's the big issue. Is why we... I'm not having Brian break any tiebreaker between us. <laughs> <laughs> Brian will Brian will go in, your, will, what, in whatever favor would annoy me the most because he thinks it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he probably would. Yep. <laughs> and he'd say Rocket League. I know he'd say Rocket League. Yeah. Because yep. he hasn't played until now. No, that sucks. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway, so that was our... Oh. I don't know if we'll be doing a game of the year. We'll probably do a game of the year again. Sure, why not? We'll have four <laughs> game of the years next year. God, there's gonna be. You thought this was bad? Like these were just games like we didn't expect to be good. Like, un- yeah, and that's the weird thing is looking at this list of these four games that I had in my my game of the year thoughts. Yeah. None of these even came close to registering out a thought of a game that would be my favorite game this year. Whereas next year I already have three or four in mind. I'm like that game's gonna be crazy. Yeah, like Mugger Solid. Like I was, we both we both are kind of a little disappointed. Mugger Solid Five. We were both a little disappointed in Arkham Knight, and uh, those were like the only games I was looking forward to. And turned yep. out it was like a free PS Plus game, a heavy rain ripoff, and uh, a Souls game, and uh, <laughs> Nintendo just being Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo decide and let's paint and get some squares. Nintendo actually having like a really successful new IP. <laughs> that's that's yes. good enough. That's good enough for me. All right, so that was the uh, that was our game of the year. Uh, that was the this, this, if you want to follow us on Twitter, we are at darksliders underscore pod. You can subscribe to us on just about everything under the sun. We're on iTunes. We're on uh, what are we on, Brad? Other things. We're on other things. If you're listening to us, you've probably yeah. This is so weird. If you're listening to us, just subscribe to us on whatever you're listening on to. Uh, yeah, I don't know why you're getting so into detail. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> Share. There we go. That's a good thing to do. Share with your friends because we all we can talk to is like talk to people on Twitter and try to post on random sites annoyingly. Uh, but if you like what if you like what our podcasts are, just you know go and tell people. You know, tweet about it or something. That would like be that. cool. Or comment. There's several of you who've commented stuff, which is really cool, and we really appreciate yes, it. So thank we've you. We've read all ten comments we've gotten. We really appreciate them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And sometimes the ones that are just like honest, I always like the most. Like, yeah, you guys, your audio quality kind of sucks sometimes. Like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're thanks. terrible. So yeah, uh, that's the Dark Siders podcast. Uh, see you next. Well, I don't know. Are we, see, are we doing one next week? Maybe next year. Oh <laughs> yeah, I don't know. 
We'll figure out when we're doing our next one. See you eventually. See ya.